Okay. Got a... There we go. This is Kathy. Hey, Kathy. How are you? It's James. I'm not... I am doing well, yes. I, uh, I had a little bit of issues. I tried to call a second ago, and I just I couldn't get the call to go through, but no, I'm, I'm glad yeah. we got you. So uh, just give me a couple seconds here. I've got to get our uh, co-hosts and everybody uh, in here on, on the call. Uh, we have got a great guest joining us today here on Skype Audio. We have got a... Uh, Tremendous topic. We're going to be chatting today, and uh, we've got to find all of our various people and get them in here. So uh, if you want to find us on Facebook or Twitter or even Instagram, you can go to our website, JiggyJaguar.com, and you'll be able to find out exactly what we are up to and what we are doing. And uh, we have also got a great guest who we're, we're going to get to here in just a few seconds. I've got to get all the... All the various moving parts in here on our on our show and uh, get things get things figured out. But uh, welcome to it. It is the world famous Chiggy Chiggy Radio broadcast on IR Perkins. Radio. And there's Dan Perkins, the amazing Dan Perkins. And I believe there's IQ. I think IQ here. I am here. Look You're at that. Here. Look at that. <laughs> and We've been uh, doing, our, doing our own show for the last fifteen. Years. <laughs> Well, I've been trying to get a hold of our guest, and I couldn't get a hold of him, and I managed to get get him now. So we are we are good to go. We have got a uh, great guest with us today. Uh, congressional candidate Kathy Barnett is with us, and uh, she joins us live here on our broadcast. And she's the author of "Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain: Being Black and Conservative in America." Kathy is also currently running for U.S. Congress in the 4th District of Pennsylvania, and she joins us today here on our broadcast. So, Kathy, tell me and tell me and the guys about your your book here. Uh, well, I, I think it's almost, almost self-explanatory, I hope, for, for the overwhelming majority of people. Nothing to lose, everything to gain is obviously a spin from uh, then-candidate Trump when he was um, on the campaign trail in Akron, Ohio, when for the first time he looked at the camera, um, because up to that point uh, in his campaign, everything he talked about was about how to make America great again. And for the first time that I'm aware of, he stopped in the middle of his campaign, looked at the camera, and I believe made one of the most um, impassioned pleas specifically to the black community what do you have to lose to give him a chance and um and this is my story from you know growing up as a little black girl on a pig farm in southern alabama growing up below the bottom rung of the economic ladder uh growing up in a situation where we had no insulation no running water an outhouse in the back and a well on the side and yet uh in this america being able to carve out a respectable life for myself Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'll, I'll start with Dan. We've got uh, best-selling author Dan Perkins with us today as well. Dan, do you have any uh, questions here for, for Kathy? Kathy may not remember, but about a month ago, I wrote a review for her book. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I do remember that. I do remember that. And it was a really, it was a, a, a wonderful, I read the book. and uh, Thank you. I was impressed. Uh, I was not only impressed with her, the way she talks about her mother and what her mother accomplished as a single mom was just an amazing story. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a, you should change the title, An American's Story. Because if you read I this know, book, right? <laughs> when you read this book and, you, and you, she said, traces her roots back in the deep south and the things that she went through as a black girl and her family went through as black people at that time i mean this is an amazing success story i mean she's first of all she's a gorgeous woman to start with but very articulate as you've heard and she writes exceptionally well she does uh, i'm a i'm a different kind of author but w one of the things that appeals to me as an author, author is the ability of a writer to use words as paint on a canvas. She does a wonderful mm -hmm. job of painting pictures about her life and what the struggle has been all of her life. Uh, Thank you. Wonderful pictures. So I, I enjoyed the book. I, I 
would tell anybody who's listening, go out and buy the book. Um, and, and so as I recall, did you go to law, did you go to law school? I did not. I should have. I should have. I majored in finance and economics um, right. and right. went down that particular route. Okay. So, so what made you decide to give up your career in the private sector to get in, involved in the politics as they are today? I know, right? You know what? And it wasn't a straight leap from the private sector working in corporate America. Of course, I also worked in um, uh, as an adjunct professor teaching corporate finance. And for the past four years, I've been um, if, uh, giving my opinions, uh, primarily at Fox News up in New York, but giving my opinions on the variety of issues that we, we face um, as a country. Uh, but... It really started six years ago when I decided to leave corporate America, you know, the nine to five job, and to become um, a, a homeschooling mama bear. And that's exactly what I did. So, for the past six years, I've had the wonderful opportunity of homeschooling my own children, um, something I'm so very grateful for the opportunity to have had. Uh, my son just finished eighth grade, and my daughter just finished fifth grade, and we've been doing this for a while now. Uh, but then I'm sitting on the floor with them in early December. Um, I don't know, I think we were doing geography, and the thought crossed my mind, what in the world are my children going to inherit? Uh, you know, so much of our time as parents is trying to raise them up for the kind of citizens our nation is going to need one day. And it, and it crossed my mind as I saw what the Democrat Party was doing with a duly elected president as far as impeaching him. I saw what they were mulling over as an immigration bill that the House eventually passed in January that literally redefines what it means to be an American. And I'm sitting there with my babies looking at them saying, oh, my goodness. What in the world are they going to inherit? Will there be an America for them when it's their turn, when it's their turn, for, when it's our turn to hand over this country to them? We are going to leave it in a far worse condition than I even inherited. And I think about, again, my story. You know, I mean, my story only takes place in America. I'm also a veteran of 10 years. And during that time, I had the wonderful opportunity of traveling to a number of other countries. And you don't have to go very far outside of America to realize just how blessed we are to be an American, to understand why over a million people uh, become legalized citizens in this country every single year. And then we have untold other hundreds of thousands who come in illegally. I understand that very well. Uh, this is the greatest country that has ever existed because it was founded upon the greatest political document ever written, the U.S. Constitution. And that is something every generation must defend with every ounce of our blood. And it starts right now with good people getting involved in politics. I, trust me, politics is dirty. I mean, I thought it was dirty before. Now that I've stuck my big toe in it, it and, and I'm peeping behind the curtain, it is despicable. Um, and there are a lot of feckless people, a lot of incompetent people, as we see across our nation, uh, people who are making, you know, life-altering decisions with a wiggle of their pen, and they show, and, and they have nothing but impunity as they do it. Um, just no remorse, uh, just very arrogant in their stance to continue to, cl to keep our nation closed, irregardless of the impact that it has on people's lives. Um, and it's not even based on logic or common sense. And so when you take all of these things together, it became very clear to me that this is exactly where I needed to be uh, in the next phase of my life, and that is fighting for my nation and fighting for some semblance of the country that I grew up with that afforded me the wonderful opportunity to have this story. Let me ask you another question about today. I read because I write for 20-some different blogs on a rotating basis. I do 40 to 60 interviews a month. Um, so I, I, I get a chance to talk to people all over the country uh, almost every day. And one of the things that I'm hearing about the shutdown is that the public school system 
and the parents were both ill-equipped to try and educate their children at home. As a woman who you said homeschooled two children, what are you hearing about the failure of the ability for the education system to educate children at home? Yeah, you know, and, and let me qualify everything that I'm going to say right now. I do not believe that everyone uh, has what it takes or should even um, homeschool their kids, um, unfortunately. Um, however, I have to say, these have been the best six years of my life. I am so very grateful to God that at some point um, in, in my trajectory, my path, my bucket list, that somehow God wiggled in there homeschooling because it was not on my initial list of things to do. I had a completely different path in mind for myself. Um, and yet this came up, and I tell you no lie, it has made me a better parent. It has caused me to sit and focus and to learn my children, to understand how they've been wired, and then to come alongside them and to teach them. And like I tell parents all the time, um, we are our children's first teachers, right? We're, we're teaching them the moment the doctor hands them over to us. And so we are our children's teachers, along the first teachers. Along the way, however, we have a, um, a very aggressive society that looks at parents and say, you're ill-equipped, you don't have what it takes, you shouldn't do this. And, so, and we buy into that, feeling as though someone else knows our children better than we do. Uh, we, we buy into the ill logic that someone else cares more about our children's education than we do. Now, I will not lie, uh, when we started off homeschooling, although I was an adjunct professor, I felt completely ill-equipped to teach my children, and yet there are so many resources, um, and there are so many great people who came alongside our family uh, and just kind of walked with us um, until, you know, we got some strength underneath our legs, and we've made mistakes, and, you know, we will continue to make mistakes. Um, but we learned from that and we pivoted. And as I look back over the past six years, again, I say it has truly been such a privilege to have had the opportunity to be able to, to spend this time with my children. I will never lament this time that I've spent with them. So what do you think are the principal issues in your district for this election? Oh, my gosh. I mean, it's the same ones for all of us, right? It's almost trying to process these issues is like on a daily basis is like trying to drink from a fire hydrant. It's just, you know, almost, I mean, every day there's something new, right? If it's not the Obama gate, uh, then it's, you know, um, uh, General Flynn. He didn't do it after all. If it's not that, it's impeachment. If it's not that, it's China and the Wuhan virus. If it's not that, it's Iran or North Korea. It's is Kim Jong-un dead or not? Every time you turn around, you can you barely have time to process one issue before you're bombarded by three or four others. And yet, um, I think the thing that is missing the most in this country, and it's something that President Trump has brought to the forefront of, of our nation, and that is uh, America first. We have a lot of globalists among us. We have a lot. I mean, you can see it even with how um, our governors are choosing winners and losers in our economy. Big box uh, globalist corporations will be the winners, hands down, in this economy. But the mom and pop shop, the middle income uh, family, uh, we will be the losers in this com in this economy. And our businesses will will, will always pull the short stick in the mind of those who do not take into account America's interest first. Um, and, you know, one of the biggest issues that I'm very mindful of uh, come after November 3rd, China must pay um, on, on a variety of levels of what they have done. Um, over 90,000 Americans have lost their lives, if we believe the numbers, due to COVID-19. And it is something that could have been prevented. 
uh, very easily had they been open, very easily had they allowed our inspectors, to, our scientists to come in and figure out what was going on, but they did not. Uh, we also had to take into account of what Congress was doing during this time of the COVID-19 spread from these early December to late January. They were impeaching a duly elected president that we now come to find out. They knew all along he, he didn't, he wasn't, he wasn't cooperating with Russia. Uh, Shift, Shifty Shift knew it all along, and yet he continued <laughs> to come before the camera saying, "I just, I, I just saw it with my own two eyes. I saw the evidence." Now we're finding out with Obama Gate that it was all a lie, and yet they drugged this nation through it. They diverted our attention away from what we really should have been focusing on, as well as the president. I think all of these things. I mean, we really. We really got to get people into office who, first and foremost, love this nation, who, first and foremost, want to see Americans thrive, and specifically, who want to see a healthy middle class. We've got a uh, great guest with us today. Uh, Kathy Barnett joins us here on our broadcast, Nothing to Lose, Everything to Gain, Being Black and Conservative in America. Uh, we've also got Dan Perkins as each and every week he, uh, helps, uh, co-host this broadcast. We also have our other co-host, Mr. IQ Al Rizzoli and Al uh, Rizzoli listening to all this. What do you make of all this IQ? Simple. If the Republican party had two twenty like her, the Democrats would never, ever get into politics. <laughs> Short and that sweet. the question. Believe me, everything she said, I have said it for 12 years, that the abdication of the parents in America in the education system of their children was a complete disaster, and she proves my point again and again and again. The building block of any nation starts with the family, not with the school, yeah. with the family, yeah. with the parents. And the parents abdicated their authority of overseeing what their children are being taught in the universities for the last 60 years. And they continue to do so, by the way. In spite of the fact they pay tens of thousands of dollars per child, per year, to educate them. Educate them in what? Garbage. Lady, you're a phenomenon. Oh my goodness. You know what? I mean, I always want to, I almost want to say, amen. You're so right. <laughs> One of the first things I realized when I took my kids out of uh, public school, my daughter was in kindergarten. My son was in third grade. And up to that point, I would have considered myself a very involved parent. I was at all of the PTA meetings. I was at all, I was always at the parent teacher conferences. I spent an exorbitant amount of time in my kids classroom, went in and ate lunch with them um, routinely. So I would have considered myself a very involved parent. And then I started homeschooling them. And it became very clear very quickly how much of my responsibility as a parent I had abdicated over to others, people I don't even know, right, uh, to do what really I should be doing. And I don't want to guilt anyone, right, because Again, I mean, I, I earnestly believe this is the best thing my family and I could have ever chosen to do six years ago. And yet I realize that for everyone, it may not be the thing for them. I'm not trying to guilt you into it. But for those who have an inkling, who have an itch, who have a thought that's been bubbling in the back of your mind, because I sat on this for about three years before uh, my son was in third grade by the time I did it. But I had the thought before he started kindergarten, but I just kept pushing it to the back of my mind because, you know, I'm one of those parents. I looked forward to that little yellow bus driving off with my children for eight hours in the day. <laughs> and now I, you know, um, but now again, I'm so very grateful that, you know, the way things work, I realized that this is what we should do as a family, my husband and I, that this is what we should do as a family, and we did it. Lady, second to this, I hope when you become in politics active to take care of the justice system, because you have no justice in America. In eight years of Obama, four years of Trump, not a single person has been indicted in anything they had done and they had done massive destruction yeah. what do you think yes 
Yes, I agree completely. In fact, you know, I mean, like, this is where the heart grows faint, you know, when you have so many people who are just, um, you know, uh, they are, I can't, I can't think of the word right now, it's on the tip of my tongue, but they have just been beaten down. Um, you know, it, it's like hope deferred. Uh, you know, you, it's so plain, it's so obvious what Comey did. It's so obvious what Lisa Page and, um, and, and Strzok and Peter Strzok did. It's so clear, it's so obvious what they did to, um, to General uh, Flynn. And yet we have a judge who is saying, no, I won't take the advice of the DOJ who's bringing the case against General Flynn. I'm going to go out and get this other independent person to do it. We see justice being trampled over. We see that, I mean, we saw it with, um, with uh, uh, Supreme Court Justice uh, Brett Kavanaugh. Uh, all of, then it was just believe the woman. Now that the same allegations in worse are being um, uh, um, levied at Joe Biden, all of a sudden people want thorough investigations. All of a sudden those rules don't, compl- don't, don't relate to him. Uh, so it's a lot of deferred hope, and a lot of people are, feel, are beginning to feel a little jaded by it all. And I agree with you. We need to see justice, and we need to see justice come swiftly. Do you think uh, the American blacks are going to change their mind? Do you honestly think they will leave the plantation? What do you think? Yeah, you know, and I'm glad you you, you coined it as such because, uh, you know, um, for most black conservatives, uh, we call it the exact same thing, the Democrat plantation, because that's exactly what it is. And I say to black people all the time, we've been um, on the Democrat plantation for 56 years now since LBJ came down with his great society idea. That's 56 years later. And like I asked them, what exactly have we gotten for our loyalty? We are their most loyal constituents and what exactly have we gotten for our loyalty we know what they get they can't get into the white house unless they get 85 to 90 percent of our vote but what exactly have we gotten for for that loyalty and then you begin to see people you know uh, blinking like a deer in headlights because when you begin to you know force people to walk out of their emotions and to begin to think critically about what is in their own best interest i have never tried to convince anyone to like this president you don't like this president okay fine i don't care the only thing i've ever tried to convince people is to recognize when someone is working in your favor and then to have the good sense to get out of the way so they can continue to work in their favor. And what President Trump has done in the past four years, he has addressed every single issue the black community has ever brought to either side of the political aisle, whether we're talking about opportunity zones, whether we're talking about the uh, unemployment rate before COVID-19, whether we're talking about um, historically black universities, uh, the First Step Act with justice reform, again and again and again, every single issue we have ever lamented over uh, for forever, for as long as I've been alive, this president has addressed it. Obama did zero for the black community. Uh, and this president comes in, and within less than three, four years, he has addressed every single issue. And I believe before COVID-19, black people were waking up to that reality. That's the reason why you saw the polls, to whatever degree you want to lean on those, were leaning, you know, their number was, was rising significantly. Uh, Post-COVID-19, now that you have Democrats, you know, repackaging welfare, and now trying to offer it, you know, as direct uh, uh, as direct cash payments to the broader American culture. Who knows where we're going to find ourselves? But I am of the firm belief that Black people are not stupid. That we recognize what is going on. Some of us will remain on the plantation, but there's a growing number of us who see the light and see the unfair treatment of this president. Fantastic. We have got uh, Kathy Barnett with us today. Nothing to lose, everything to gain. Tell us about your uh, your, your your political run here, because I know that uh, me and the guys have some questions about that. But tell us about why you decided to, to run uh, for office. Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, I love this Edmund Burke quote, uh, evil. Uh, e- oh, my goodness, I'm forgetting that. Uh, evil prevails when good people do nothing. 
Um, and there's a lot of evil. I mean, like, you can find whatever adjective you want to use. If you don't like the word evil, put, you know, stick in something else. But there's a lot of things that are going on in this nation that does not benefit me and my family. For example, open, open borders, open borders, uh, decriminalizing the border so that it literally erases the border, which is what Democrats knew House Bill 8353, the new way forward, does. It erases the borders in America. It does absolutely nothing to benefit me and my family. And so when that becomes clear, you realize that if not me, then who? Who am I sitting back waiting for to swoop down and save me from the ridiculous, feckless, incompetent um, leadership that, we, that we're currently suffering through right now. And so it started with that thought. If not me, then who? What in the world are my children going to inherit? This is the time for me to get involved. And uh, by the grace of God, it has taken off. I mean, it is just amazing the support that we're getting. Now, we need donations. I am not getting big tax money. And I am not getting, uh, even from the Republican establishment, I mean, when I say I'm looking behind the curtain and there's a lot of foolishness going on, I'm looking behind our curtain with the R on it. I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not even facing the Democrats yet until after the primary. Right now I'm just looking at what we've inherited as a Republican uh, party, and it is just utter ridiculousness and would be hopeless if I did not believe in the American spirit and that this is the greatest country alive. And what I believe believe, kind of like what Japan did, um, I believe Democrats are doing now. They are waking up a silent beast. Uh, the American, the average American person is mad, good and mad at this point. Uh, they're beginning to wake up to how draconian uh, the, and, over, and overreaching uh, the power grab has been in so many states that just will not open up. It makes no sense for it to be closed, and they will not open up. And so, and as people wake up, as people get good and hot, as my grandmother used to say, uh, they're 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 sending me emails. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so, Dan, uh, jump in there. I'm yes. sure you've got some questions about her political I, I do. run. I, yeah, I, I do. I want to. I, I want to. Two things. <laughs> several things. First of all. Um, I want to give you, since you talked about evil, I want to give you a, a website when you have a moment to go look at this narrative. And it's called thejezebelhunter.com. And that is a commentary that deals with evil as we know it in, in the American political system. The, thejezebelhunter.com. Now, a piece of news came out today that has me very, very concerned. I can't find it anywhere in the mainstream media. The communist Chinese government announced today they were putting 100 million people, 100 million people in lockdown because there were 16 people that had a virus. They didn't say what kind of virus, but they have a virus. And I'm concerned, is this another strain, a new virus? And what are the Chinese? They haven't offered to, to take any help or anything else. They just announced that they've sequestered 100 million people. Should we be pressing yeah. to find, find out what's going on there? I mean, as always, right, uh, China is the manufacturing floor for the world. And so, um, you know, our country is always interacting with China. I mean, we, we've seen even with the Wuhan um, virus, COVID-19, that, uh, you know, how, how much we've abdicated our role as a nation of, pro of providing the basics, the essentials for our own survival, how much we've abdicated that out, diversified it too much out of our own control and in the hands of a communist nation, which has not benefited us as well. Now, on the piece that you're speaking of, I have not seen that. I don't know that. Um, uh, however, I'm very grateful that we still have a lockdown on our travel with China. Um, and I think, I think the world is waking up to the Chinese government. I mean, I've known about this for some time. I used to talk to my students about it when I taught in the university, um, as well as writing about it, um, reading about it, uh, you know, just, you know, 
the dangers of what we were getting ourselves into by locking arms with a country that is fundamentally different in how they see the world than as we do. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give you a chance for a free commercial. What's your website and how do we send money to you? Oh, my goodness. Thank you so very much. My website is Kathy Barnett for congress.com kathy barnett or congress.com you can just google my name i pop up immediately yes and we do we need large and small donations uh we need to be introduced to the right people uh i'm it has just been really amazing i'm so very grateful to every single person that has given but if you want real leadership it's going to have to come by us all getting engaged i cannot do it by myself i never thought i would do it by myself I need good people to come alongside. I need people who love this country and want to see this country thrive. We have a chance to get good leadership into office. Um, I believe I am that I am that person, and I need you guys to make me viable, to keep me viable all the way throughout. Now, one of the questions, Jim, on, on this election thing. Did I, did I read recently where the governor is, wants to change the primary to June 6th? Well, uh, I have not heard June 6th here in Pennsylvania right now. It is June 2nd. A tremendous amount of money on both sides of the aisle have been spent to send out those ballots and to reconfigure everything. But who knows? I wouldn't put anything past Democrats. One thing we know about Democrats is that when they get a taste of power, they squeeze every bit of juice out of it that they possibly can. They leave nothing on the table. They will rewrite heaven and earth, uh, the rising and the setting of the sun, if they could. Uh, these are some very power-hungry people. So it wouldn't surprise me, although I haven't heard that, and um, I would think they would not, but, again, I wouldn't put anything past them. So have you had a chance to talk to any other Republican first-term entry candidates around the country? I have. Uh, right before we logged down, I was at CPAC, so excited I went to CPAC. It was the last big brouhaha I had before getting quarantined like so many others. Um, and I did. It was very exciting. It was very exciting to see a number of black people who are running for the very first time. And, again, it's, it's, it's because of a Trump economy. It's because of a Trump worldview that I mean it's not it's not by accident that you have people like myself writing a book as I did it's not by accident that you have people like myself who are who think like oh my goodness I could I could I could do that I can run for office right I mean because when Donald Trump was running in 2016 I mean you know I never said anything bad about him but he was probably number 16 out of a list of 16 who were, who was running there was no way I was going to vote for him but slowly but surely this man won us over uh, so many of us over and the fact that he won period is unthinkable like if you didn't think there was a guy, surely you believe there was one now. Of course, Democrats tried to say it was Russia that got him into office, but it was something very providential that occurred uh, in 2016. And it gave a lot of us the idea that if he could do it, perhaps I can do it too. Perhaps I can make a difference as well. How, how has the COVID virus uh, and, the, and the shutdowns Affected your ability to campaign. You know, I, you know, I mean, I, the jury's still out, right? On one hand, I'm no longer able to go out and have uh, meet and greet uh, as I was before. Prior to COVID-19, everywhere I showed up, it was packed out. 300 people, 400 people. It was just amazing to see these people driving for hours just to get to where I was, just to shake my hand. It was very humbling. Um, but to see that immediate response solidified the fact that, you know, people are hungry for leadership. They're hungry for something authentic. And by the grace of God, I believe that is what I am um, offering. Uh, Post-COVID-19, um, I'm thinking, you know, maybe because we're such a new uh, campaign, um, I've never ran for a public office before, that for us it was very easy to pivot from, you know, from 
from doing the routine political speech, stump speeches, to now moving virtually. And so that's exactly what we've been able to do. This Thursday, uh, we are hosting our first protest, um, uh, you know, talking to people around here and realizing that, I mean, people are just breaking down crime. They have... You know, I was talking to one uh, um, legal immigrant who moved to this nation, uh, saved her money, uh, was a paralegal, worked very hard, had a dream of opening up her own hair salon and did just that. In January, her business was doing so well, she expanded it, renovated it, used her savings to renovate and um, and extended her business over into the, the office space next to hers. That was in January. Uh, I saw her two Fridays ago, and she started crying, saying, I'm going to have to close my business down. I haven't received one penny of any kind of assistance, and I can't keep going like this. And now we have a governor who says plate businesses like hers are so non-essential, he's going to keep them on red, not being able to open up until the very end. So they will be the last wave of businesses. And it's just illogical. It makes absolutely no sense, especially since his barber remains essential and he goes routinely to get his hair cut. But all of a sudden, we're not smart enough to be able to replicate whatever it is his barber is doing so that other businesses can have a chance to survive. Good point. Good point. I think what we're what we're. So, so I did an interview yesterday morning, and I raised this question. Um, why is it that the vast majority of the states who want to penalize people for wanting to go to work are red are are, are managed and controlled by the Democrats? The states that want to open up and expand their business, put people back to work, rebuild the economy, they're almost all red. So there's clearly yeah. a difference, clearly a difference between what the Democrats and the Republicans see as the best path out of this COVID-19 crisis. And I would hope that, that would be telling to the American electorate, but maybe not. I have no idea, but I think the I think the plans of the Democrats are simple. Their plans are always simple. Um, they are elaborate in how they get to what they want, um, and they're very determined. But I believe the plan is simple. Uh, ult- their their ultimate goal is control. They want to control it all, and I believe in the way that they're going that they're intending to do that is by forcing the middle class to run through our savings. Uh, to run through our kids' college funds and everything else so that when they present us with their Green New Deal or their universal health care or their universal education or their free this, free that, their guaranteed jobs, their minimum, because if you notice, you know, uh, there have been no furloughs from the federal government um, or from the state payroll, right? So those jobs are have all been secured and no furloughs. But the rest of us are losing everything. And I believe their plan is simple. It is to put us into a position of dependency. It's the very same thing. Dan, you read my book. I talked about it. You know, um, I, I think I called the chapter the, the Harbinger, the Warning for mm-hmm. the broader American culture. Um, as a black person, I've had a front row seat at the failed liberal policies uh, within the black communities that have controlled it, exploited it, um, and left it destabilized um, on in, in, in uh, almost every single metric. And, I, and my warning there was the sad thing is that now that liberals have perfected their destabilizing policies in the black community, now they were repackaging it and offering it to the broader American culture. But, of course, there are people like you and I who are saying, no, thank you. I don't want all those freebies. I don't want to become dependent on the government. I don't want your form of welfare, right? I go to work and I, and I provide for myself. Well, now they are forcing us, they're crippling us, and they're going to make us dependent upon them so that when they present Nancy Pelosi's $3 trillion stimulus that is basically welfare on steroids, we're going to be a little bit more open to receiving that. So let me May ask anybody you. tell the people, do you tell your people that the $3 trillion 
will be a burden on your future generations, not Pelosi? Who is going Listen. to... Listen. Yeah, sorry, go on. No, 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 no. I mean, you know, I mean, yes, right? I mean, like, we know that. But if it's, you know, uh, if I'm running through my kids, um, you know, college, and now some funds, and someone says to me, because of this, I'm running through it, and someone says to me, we can send your kids to college for free. I'm going to be a little bit more apt for that, right? Or if I'm looking in the refrigerator and I don't have food, and someone says, hey, we got a program for that, I'll, I'll probably be a little bit, I mean, no matter how patriotic I am, at some point, we all have our breaking point. And although we know this is not going to be good for us, I'm thinking about the right now and the, the right here and the right now. And that's very unfortunate, but I believe their plan is very simple. And that's the reason why it is time for us to be silent no more and to begin to go and to make our voices heard. This is our nation, not theirs. So can I, I want to ask you one, one more question if I could. How has the, how have the plantation blacks reacted to your candidacy? <laughs> um, you know, it's it, it, it's the same as always, right? I'm a little bit of everything. But, you know, to be black, conservative, outwardly support President Trump, you cannot have thin skin. You grow thick skin very quickly when you decide to think for yourself. Um, and, it's, and it's a challenge. I mean, it is truly a challenge. Um, and yet it is a challenge I believe I was, I was uh, built for <laughs> because um, I honestly do not care what other people think about me. Now, of course, if you, if you read my book like Dan did, you, you, you begin to get a clear picture of why I don't care. I mean, I've actually had to go through some things to get to where I am. So if someone doesn't like me, uh, it, you know, it, 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 it doesn't go to the core of who I am, right? Because I've had to work through some things. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's never nice being rejected. You know, it's never a good feeling to be rejected. But when you have purpose, uh, everything becomes a little bit clearer. Your priorities become a little bit more uh, fixed. And that is where I find myself. Our nation, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I try not to practice hyperboles and make all of these wild, you know, conspiracy theory kind of statements. I try to be very focused. But um, I believe our nation, that we're in a battle for the very definition of who we are as Americans. Um, and um, I believe that battle is waging and the jury is out <laughs> on which way it's going to go. If enough people wake up, I believe we may, we just may have an opportunity. I mean, we're going to feel some pain because we've allowed it to go so far, but, you know, we may have the opportunity to save our nation and be able to hand over to the next generation something at least a little bit better, if not par with what we inherited ourselves. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, fantastic. Well, uh, as we wrap up here with everybody, I want to start with IQ. Um, IQ, before we, before we, uh, we move on to everybody else, uh, give me your thoughts on, on how Kathy presented herself today. Kathy has been amazing. Thank God you bring some very decent patriotic Americans instead of the garbage leftists sometimes. <laughs> she is amazing, and I wish you the best. And God willing, when Thank I get you. my green card, which I applied for legally, I will come, I will contribute, and I'll vote for you. Oh, no. IQ unleashed oh, on the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> so, IQ, I would love for you to go to my website and uh, send me to. your contact recorded. information. Send me your contact information. I would love to stay in touch with you. I will be in touch with you. I promise you. Now, uh, I Thank wish you. you the best. God bless. Now, Dan, uh, bring us up to speed on everything you're involved in, my friend. To, there's not enough time, but but um, <laughs> I do I do want since she, Kathy talked so much about evil and how much evil is out there, I would encourage people to go to the JezebelHunter.com and read read the commentary that's there. Um, I I don't do this very often, Kathy. I have worked in with uh, a number of. Republican candidates over my career, 
So I'm going to get the contact information from Jim, and we'll have a conversation to see if I can help you in any way. <laughs> Thank you. I, I accept. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Take care. Now, uh, now, Kathy, before we let you go, how do we get the book and uh, contribute to the campaign and everything else? Yeah, you can get the book wherever books are sold, you, um, specifically Amazon, or you can go to uh, Barnes & Noble um, and, a and a variety of other places. Uh, you can go to contribute, to donate, uh, to come alongside what it is that we are strongly uh, – you know, I was going to say attempting, but we're not attempting. We're doing it. And it is so amazing. <laughs> and it is so exciting. I wake up routinely between 3 and 4 a.m. Just really excited about what it is that we're doing. Uh, but please go to Kathy with a K, Barnett with an E at the end, for congress.com. Kathy Barnett for congress.com and contribute. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, Kathy, you have. Uh done amazing today uh i appreciate you making time and uh thanks to iql rizzoli and as always uh iq is googleable you can find him on uh just i iql rizzoli and uh dan perkins dan perkins guru and uh i appreciate it kathy and uh gentlemen we will talk to you guys next week and kathy i'll put you in touch with dan and iq and uh we'll go from there appreciate it thank you thank you guys thank blessing you. thank you Thank you much. Bye. There she goes. Uh, and we are going to go after this.